What's up, my Fina loves? It's Miss Fina D coming to you all from V19 News. Now, I didn't care about this interview. I wasn't going to even talk about it. But a few of you are in my DMs wanting me to talk about it. So let's get into it. Apollo, Fetra Park's ex-husband, sat down with Carlos King. And you know where I'm going to straight, okay? What he had to say about Kenya Moore and how dismissive he was. So let's hear what he had to say. And then I will come back with my commentary. Let's get into it. Um, when it came to the housewives, when y'all came on the show, it, I mean, eyeballs were on the two of you because it was, you both are Scorpios, which inherently means you're, you're private people, but you're on the biggest show on Bravo is the number one show on Bravo. And then your life has changed drastically. And then it became a big story about your marriage so much so that when Kenya Moore came on the show, was that something you were surprised that people really took this flirtiness? Would you what would you say about what you and Kenya's friendship were when you first met her on the show? Were you attracted to Kenya when you um, met her? <laughs> Um, I thought that she was really a dope person, like super cool. When we first met, I think it was with uh, Walter at the uh, mm -hmm. the Grand Prix. That was the very first time that I met her, and um, you know, I've I've seen her around and stuff like that, but this is my first time like interacting. What I really liked about, her, I thought that she was just had a good soul, a good person, uh, based on like just super funny. And I wasn't like in a flirty way. I was like, oh, I could vibe with that. Like, you know, she seemed like one of the one of the authentic people that if we have to film with people and all this, like it could be a jokey, like a cool situation. And some people might have thought like it might be flirtatious or something like that. It started out as being um, she's competitive as hell. Mm -hmm. It started out by that. That's what really was like, because I'm super competitive and I'm just like, OK. And it started out on the golf thing, a little putt putt thing and then some other things like and I was like. I can rock with this person, like, but not in a sexual way or nothing like that at first. The chemistry was good. Now, was she attractive? Yeah, very much so, you know. Did you did you know who she was based on her being Miss USA? Yeah. Being a couple? Okay. Yeah, I knew. Okay. But like I say, that didn't all come together as far as the knowledge until putting it. I've seen her out and about, and I've seen her like in the media and stuff like that, but I didn't put two and two together until after the fact. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, wow. Okay. So... I don't think, I think, man, she made it clear that she was attracted to me. I mean, kind of, I mean she kind of said it, you know. To when she say, says, Apollo's kind of fine. Yeah. You felt that she was letting you know that she was attracted to you? Um, yeah, I think so. But I wasn't using that as a, as like a, as a toy or a pawn, you know, to, to put on the board and move it around. It was just like, okay, cool, you know. Uh, she verbalized it. I mean, I was like, I just kept it to myself. So she's a nice looking woman. I just kept it to myself. She verbalized it. But, um. I happen to like men who have a lot of personality, and I like men who are very real. <laughs> I love Peter. Darker the berry and sweet the juice, honey, that's just how we like it. <laughs> and Peter is dog. <laughs> I happen to like men who have a lot of personality, and I like men who are very real. I happen to like men who have another personality. I like Peter. The darker that this, that woman went into details. A married woman sat there and said all of those things, and it was crickets. And during that reunion, when Kenya said Nene was flirting with Peter, Bravo conveniently did not play the clip that I just played. But yet, Kenya Moore said, Apollo, he's kind of fine. And oh my goodness, it's a war. Okay? Now, no one is saying. Kenya Moore is a scent. But imagine had Kenya Moore gone as far as Nene did. Because Nene took her feelings from confessionals to actually being touchy feeling with Peter. Saying it to Peter's face. And Bravo conveniently. Now I played those clips. And Portia and all of them looking as if 
they did not watch the same show as if we did not see these clips there are more clips for but due to copyrights reasons of course i cannot play those other extended clips cynthia billy said now i see why kenya moore married mark daly he's very handsome the only reason why the kenya moore making that comment or even joking around with apollo was blown up is because they were threatened by kenya moore and i'm not saying because this person did it and that person did it that excuse kenya for making that comment i'm just saying when kenya said everybody flirt nene was flirting does that mean she was going to run off with peter no cynthia billy was her best friend of course not uh, Cynthia Bailey saying Kenya Moore ex-husband was attractive does that mean she's going to try to get to know Mark Daly and run up no that's my whole point Nene touching on Peter and joking with him and saying how attractive he is and if she had met him in a different lifetime that's another clip she would absolutely date him did that mean that Cynthia Bailey was going to be threatened that her husband now ex-husband was going to run off with Nene no Kenya Moore was just pointing out other people have made comments so why is my comment or even interaction that did not go past the group anything that happened happened in the group with your wife being right there the same way how nini would joke around with peter thomas no one is trying to run off with your husband it is not that deep lady you are just insecure and that's all kenya was trying to point out and then of course apollo made it worse by lying on her and he's about to explain why he lied on her you all know i'm very detailed so if i say this person name i'm going to flash their pictures on the screen but i'm not flashing the men images on the screen because you all know what they look like the focus are on the women right now the women flirting or making comments and people ignoring it because it wasn't kenya moore kenya moore was the woman that bravo wanted to make their villain and so she became their scapegoat under no circumstances are we going to elevate promote and make an intelligent black woman the star or the face of the real housewives of atlanta that's not going to happen we want to see the people who are fighting and doing all of this we do not want to see an intelligent beautiful woman be the face so if we can tarnish her reputation her character drag her name through the mud lie on her do the whole bias editing do not play the flashback clips that would clear her name and say yeah nini absolutely said those things about peter but will play every flashback clip about her will even go as far as going on twitter to grab tweets but while there they will not grab the tweets that led to kenya response yeah i know it's x now but i still call it twitter Back to my point, and people fell for Bravo nonsense because under no circumstances, like I said, this intelligent woman is going to be the face of the network and the black women in this show. That's not how we see black women. We see them fighting, bringing each other down, being disgusting, lying on each other, going to the bottom of the barrel. And that's how we see them. And now we have an actual celebrity on the show. Yes, you had Candy, Cindy, Billy. Now you bring in Kenya Moore. We have someone who's a part of history. But no, that's not the angle we're going on. We're not going to show that she owned her own production company and all of the amazing things she's done. Absolutely not. We're going to take it down this road and this dirty and nasty and dark path. That's where we're going to take it because the same way how they were able to pretend like the audience did not see what Nene said and did not see Nene actually flirting with Peter on camera, they did their best to edit and hide and minimize it. They could have done the same for Kenya Moore. They could have said, okay, Kenya made a comment next. Find your storyline somewhere else next. But then Apollo went ahead and amplified it by lying on her because he even admitted in this interview, and we're going to get into it, that he had to set his family up for success. So lying and then apologizing meant Phaedra was going to have more scenes and more seasons on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and more scenes and more seasons equal checks and money. 
because he was heading to prison, he had to find a way to set up his family. How disgusting to do all of that and not care that you're the reason this woman is being crucified and dragged and disrespected and you sat there on that lie. So now that I've got you my commentary out, I'm going to be quiet and allow you all to listen to what he had to say. I would do my best to not jump in. But what I've said is nothing new. I've been saying this for years and years later, Kenya Moore have been beyond vindicated. All of the people, even the closure legs to marry men, woman, even though we knew Greg was married, may he so rest in peace when she got with him. Who did she end up with? Another married man who now ex-wife sued her. And now Portia is going through her own mess. And Phaedra had been exposed that she was messing around with other men even before she was divorced and just a hot mess. So Kenya Moore been, like I said, beyond vindicated at this point because everything she said to those women and about those women when she was simply defending herself because Kenya never started. Don't come for me unless I sent for you. But she will end it. And everything she talked about, we've witnessed every single one of them crumbled, okay? So with that being said, let's get back to everything else Apollo had to say as it relates to Kenya. I just thought that like, she, she had a good, good personality is what, I, is what I liked about it. When did you realize your wife had a problem with your friendship with Kenya? Well, I realized it when I think I saw Kenya doing an interview or something. And I know that during that time, a lot of new people. So you, you learn a lot in this business. And uh, just backing up a little bit, while being on this show, you know, in hindsight, you there's a lot of things I'm sure you wish you would have did different. Mm -hmm. And or and then you learn from it. When you get the opportunity again, you can implement those changes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for me, the same thing. And I think we, we skimmed over it a little bit um, prior to doing this interview about how, you know, just having that person, you, you know, I think when you come new into the celebrity or new into a platform, you need that person that can kind of coach you and guide you mm -hmm. and let you understand, okay, whether if it's product placement or whether it's, you know, working the proper contract or w what to say, what not to say, you know, uh, like PR or whatever and then some people don't even have the revenue to afford things like that so then you don't want to find yourself in you know being misrepresented and so forth but I say it to say that I wish that you know we would have been better coached but see I think I think I was thinking that you know Phaedra the fact that she was uh, you know IP attorney during that time that she had this whole thing kind of mapped out mm -hmm. because I did go I signed on that dotted line based on the fact that we're signing as a family and we're doing this as a family. You're going to protect me and cultivate me and like vice versa. Right. And that wasn't the case. But that's a, that's later down the line, maybe in this interview. But um, when I saw Kenya do her interview, um, I thought she did well. And she's already been down that road before, but I thought she really did well and how she answered the questions and so forth. And I thought, you know, you know, I look sometimes at the shows and I say, oh, man, the makeup looks good. Or, you know, you learn these things, right? Okay, well, that man, that makeup don't look or the camera's not hitting that right. You know, you look at all mm -hmm. this stuff, right? So I thought, you know, everything was good, but it wasn't in like a flirtatious way. So I said, I sent her a message and I said, uh, you did well. I said, I like your dress. You did well. And I think she responded back. Thanks, blah, blah, blah. And Phaedra's seen that. I think I... I I believe she said, thank you, babe, right? I don't remember, but okay, okay let's just say she did, right? Okay. Said you didn't take kind to that. But here it is. Is Now, I don't know if that was inappropriate. I mean, some people might say that was inappropriate. I didn't think it was inappropriate. I mean, hell, we're all on this platform together, right? We're all... How did Phaedra see it? Did she go through your phone? Yeah, she went through the phone. While you were asleep? No, we were right there. I, she I just snatched she, she, your phone? Well, we were kind of like laying there and I was like, whatever. And she, um, I think something happened. I just know a shoe came flying by me and the guy, and the shoe hit the, hit the wall. Yeah. <laughs> like she literally threw the shoe at me, threw a high heel at me. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, she, she seen it and threw the high heel and- uh, In your face? I, yeah, I had my back turned. So she's back there and I'm, so I sleep on the side of the bed that's closer to the wall. I don't know if you remember that house. Did you go to that I, house? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah of course. In, uh, in, uh, yeah. Not the one in Buckhead, the one in... No, Smyrna. Yeah, Smyrna, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's like a little area. Go straight to the bed. When you come in, 
so I was sitting on that side and that whole open area is over there. So she threw the shoe and uh, I'm like, and then it goes down from there. And I'm just like, and then that's, I guess that fueled her to say, why are you, you know, doing this with my husband, da, 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 da. And then Kenya goes on the defense, like, what are you talking about? It was, at first it was like, then it just gets a little more deeper and deeper, you know? It, it, it definitely got deeper so much so that obviously, you know, when you guys were in Anguilla mm-hmm. and you threw Kenya in the pool. No, that's not how that happened. Okay. That's not how I was. I, I didn't work that season. Yeah, so you, tell me. When you run it back. Go ahead. Talk to me. I'm there chilling. Mm-hmm. All out chilling there. Greg, Nini, uh, rest in peace. Yes. Uh, they're over there. Uh, Phaedra's over there with them in the cabana. Portia and Cradell's over here, and I don't know, Peter's somewhere right there, and I'm there chilling, talking to the guys. She walks by, and she pushes me in the pool. Mm-hmm. That's what she did. And then Phaedra, you know, she makes her little side eye, and she does her little comments under her breath. I don't know what she's saying, right? But the cameras caught it. And so I get, oh, it's game on. Playtime. Let's go. Because y'all competitive. Yeah, so yeah. I get out the pool, and quite naturally, she's going in that water. So that's when I scooped her up and we jumped in the pool. So it wasn't like I just gonna come and pick this right. woman up and she she got a man there and I'm just gonna throw her in the water. No, I'm not that, you know, that brazen, but you know, I could be, but <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> like, that night. No, I wasn't gonna do that. <laughs> so that I mean, you know, so people, you know, they I don't I didn't see anything wrong with it, man. We were out having a good time, people were drinking, we're on vacation. What, what come on. But hey, it's for the TV. It's reality TV, right? Well, I, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that, you know, listen, it, it was evident that... And listen, I, I what, what started was a healthy conversation amongst couples uh, was appropriate or inappropriate, so much so that I... Again, correct me if I'm wrong. I do believe Kenya texts you, thank you, babe. And a lot of women said a single woman should never text a married man the word babe. And Kenya has apologized for that, right? Because again, is what you said, we, we, we're learning how to navigate through this. Um, and I also think you just learn like, I'm being competitive to this woman because you know, she pushed me in the pool first, I'm gonna get her back. And my wife is there, so I'm not trying to do anything, you know, because my wife is there. But then it became something crazy when conversation started to occur where you accused Kenya of trying to suck your dick. <laughs> and that's when things became That's not funny, but crazy. I, I just was thinking about some other stuff too. Did you tell Phaedra that because you wanted to just get her off your case and get the hill out of your head? Well, couple things I um if we're I didn't know that the show was going to get so convoluted and that it was going to be like an eye for an eye and everybody's going to do that because that's not because if you recall like the very first the first year right I was there but I wasn't really there True. Right. So I didn't it wasn't until like maybe something happened at one of the reunions where it was like, I think uh, Stephen was uh, he was back there and he was like, said something to me uh, like something like you can talk or something like that. He was making a joke and was like, dude, why don't you express yourself? Mm -hmm. Like, well, how come you just always stay dormant? He was like, man, you did really well. Like, why aren't you speaking? And I was just like, well, you know. Fuck it, I don't. <laughs> All right, cool. I, I, okay, I'll do better next time. Yes, sir. Okay. And so I started coming out of my shell a little more, and I didn't know that it was going to be to the point where everybody is going to just try to, you know, rip your soul out and always take, you know, and take everything for face value. And so when we were having, just like I say, if all of us went on vacation and we're friends per se, and we're all friends and we all dine together, we all go out together, we all do these things together, I wouldn't have a problem if, 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 if my wife said babe to you or if, if you and her were, I got homeboys now, like shoot, me and Shireen has gotten into situations and I'm, some man might find it messed up, right? My boys will take, make sure that my wife is okay, give her the car to drive to come home and she drunk, take care of whatever, because we're friends. Mm-hmm. So I don't think nothing about it. And if she calls them babe or says, oh, you look good, babe, or, or whatever, I don't, 
I don't look at that as funny because I mean my relationship is a little different. My friends, the way we roll is different. I don't I don't feel intimidated by anything like that. But now on the other side of it, when we're at that reunion, I wouldn't have said nothing. It's like this. I've let bygones be bygones. I let everything be chill. But when Kenya, she did open her mouth and start saying stuff about I've been texting her and all oh, stop your man from texting me and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Nah, you don't do that Because there was Did anybody look at the text messages And see what was all in the text messages There could have been a lot of things That was inappropriate in the messages Okay But once you put that out there That's when I said okay All gloves are off You know what Okay Since we're going to put on we, We're on this TV show And y'all want to act stupid Let's act stupid Since that's what you want to do Okay, I'm going to give it to you First of all, you shouldn't have opened your mouth and said nothing about it. You shouldn't have said nothing. That You should have just left that out and y'all just argue about whatever y'all arguing about. But now you, it feel like you, of you. Yeah, you, you came from me. I'm sitting back here on the chair or wherever I was at, right there on the side. Dude, you should have never opened your mouth. Because I didn't open my mouth about you. I didn't say nothing. I didn't say, I've never said anything about you. You started it. Not me. That's how I felt about it. So you felt it was an eye <laughs> for an eye. Going back to this competitiveness, like you did this, I'm going to get at you. And is that the reason why you did lie about what she was trying to offer you? And that's the reason why you ended up in prison twice. Lying on people, throwing things out there that's not the truth. What Kenya said was the truth. The same way how you touched, she looked beautiful in her interview for confessionals. So you sent her a message that she looked nice. You didn't have to text her, Mr. Married Man, but you did. And she responded, thank you. Okay. Candy saw the messages. She gave Candy her phone. So there was nothing in there that was inappropriate. The only issue that Candy had with it was, why is he having all of these long conversations with you or texting you? Why is he doing that? But Candy saw the messages and there was nothing in there that was incriminating nothing okay so kenya wasn't lying that you were texting her so you should have fired back with okay i text you in and then let you and your wife argue but to fire back with that lie you are wrong and to tell her you should have kept your mouth shut and trying to shut her up while your wife sat there trying to degrade her and all Kenya was saying, girl, your beef is not with me. Maybe you should go through your man phone again and see that he's been texting me, trying to reach out to me. That's all she was saying. So she didn't lie. So you should have responded with the truth. Okay, Kenya, pull your phone out and show everyone our communication and responses. That's how you should have handled that, even though Candy already saw the messages. But to sit there and flat out lie in the moment I shut up, you will hear how dismissive he is and was about what he did as if it wasn't a big deal. So disgusting. But let's keep listening. That's that's the reason. But also it was also a lot of it was calculated, too, because this is why if you look at the whole thing, okay, and people can, everyone has an opinion, I feel like a lot of that ride, a lot of that ride was based on her notoriety, I think a lot of that came with the quorum between her and Phaedra, right, oh, that was a beef, right, me, then after that, post that, it came the infidelity situation, that rode on for a whole season, I go to prison, so the part that, this is the other part. So how I turned around and, and, and I'm thinking about the longevity, about Phaedra, about the longevity of the show, about her still having a staple in the program. So the best thing I can do is, it's a ripple effect. And people don't see that, but you have to put, you have to put those pieces out there and you have to look long term. So I looked at it when I made that statement and I did what I did because it was, it was part of it was calculated. So when I do what I when I did what I did, I'm looking three, four seasons down the line like this can't just cut off like this. There's no way. So now by me going to prison and me telling everybody at Peter's restaurant at the bar one that this was all a lie. Then it's like, what the fuck? OK, it's a lie now. Oh, shit. So now, once I go outside and I apologize to Kenya, now here you go, all this other shit. And then people don't really know if it's true or not true. 
So then here you go. Now everybody's going to talk about this, talk about that. And then I got to go. I'm going away. Her and Phaedra can figure it out down the mm -hmm. line. Whatever, whatever. Spoken like a true criminal. I lie on someone. I don't care. They being crucified and dragged and all of that. I don't care about their mental health, emotional, none of that. I don't care. Now my wife and my family is set up for a few seasons of a storyline. And then Kenya realized, okay, I'm not going to continue to provide this lady with that. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's go on a trip. Let's move on. And then Fidja realized, okay, yeah, I'm over here laughing with Portia, but that's not enough. You know, this whole freaking frack, that's not enough. Let me go back and pretend like I'm mad at Kenya more all over again because she wants to throw me a divorce, you know, party. Let me pretend like I'm upset just to hold on to this old and still narrative and storyline and it fell flat because people could see through her desperation and then of course we already know what happened and what led to Fisher Park's demise on the Real Housewife of Atlanta. So you were trying to set up Phaedra to have staying power on the show. You knew you were going away because one thing about the night of bar one I remember talking to you and you felt like I just want to clear the air before I go in. Yep. And you were like, Los, I want to say this to her. And Phaedra wasn't there that night. And, you know, you, you, you have the courage to, you know, admit that to Kenya, who at the time she said she felt that she had like this scarlet letter on her, that she was somebody who would offer fellatio to a married man. And I, 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 I believe what she said, I'm paraphrasing, but she, 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 she felt like the world thought she was that type of woman who would do that to a married man. Um, so kudos to you for obviously, you know, admitting to it. A lot of people did want to know if Phaedra put you up to that. No. You did that all on your own. All on my own. All on your own. 1,000%. And, and, she and she, she, Phaedra believed it. Oh yeah, she believed that part. Yeah, she believed it. Um, Cause I mean, I just stood my, I just stood my ground. I stood my ground. You, you know, and you know, I still felt how I, I still felt how I felt about, you know, a man knows how far I think he can go with a woman. You know, given the given the circumstance. Um, Again, I don't think, and I'm not minimizing it. I'm not saying it didn't hurt her, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it might have hurt her emotionally. It didn't hurt her financially. Pedro or Kenya? No, either one. Either one, okay. Either one. It hurt both of them emotionally, but financially it didn't hurt. And as far as their career, it didn't hurt. And, you know, you, you're not going to be, who's looking at you interpersonally if whatever your preference is and whatever you choose to do as an individual, who's looking at you, whose opinion really matters? That's an interpersonal thing. So if someone's, the world is looking at you as being uh, a whoremonger or looking at you as being a person who offers married men fellatio, does, what are we talking about? Who says, who says that? Who's really saying that to you? Nobody. What an idiot. I mean, what an idiot. Who says that to you? Nobody. When this woman is still currently being dragged for a lie that people are believing that did happen, even though you came out and said it was a lie. And then for you to sit here and be dismissive, apologize, stand on that, and then next question. And he's so dumb because the reason why Kenya Moore is still standing, the reason why Kenya Moore is still going, the reason why that lie did not and Kenya Moore is because she know who she is. And that's the reason why she was able to get through it. So all of the mess you're saying, and it's all about how you see yourself. That's why she's still standing. And that's why that lie didn't destroy her because she knows who she is. She knows what she stands for. She knows the real Kenya. So I don't care who's writing some nonsense on social media. I don't seek validation from you people. When I'm not on this app or on that show, the people that I work with, the people in Hollywood, my real friends, all of that, they have nothing but amazing things to say about me. So I don't care. I don't need validation from all of you. And that's the reason why she was able to sit on that couch. And sometimes it was Kenya Moore 
against all of them, include any production and everybody. And she sat there, not tilting her crown, not once held her ground against every single one of them. And she is still standing. So you're not telling her anything that she doesn't know. But that still doesn't excuse your dismissive behavior. Just because you're like, I'm not saying that it was right. But then you're laughing and you're saying, well, it might have hurt her emotionally, but financially, there should be no but. There should be, once again, I sincerely apologize. Next question. Just disgusting. My goodness. No lesson learned. And that's the reason why he's in the media again for allegedly cheating on his new wife. He's on camera being at some of the ladies' house. Of course, he basically worked his way around that question and his explanation when Carlos asked him. I'm not inserting that part in here. And to sit here and be so dismissive is disgusting. You wanted to set your wife up and your family up, and that's why you lie. Didn't I say that years ago, and I've been saying it for years, that they used her for a storyline, a disgusting moment, and a lie for a storyline, and when that storyline was dry, now let me go ahead and lie on Candy, and hopefully... Bravo will let this slide and I can come back on and Kenny and I can have a conversation and I can apologize. And Kenny said, no, it stops here. You are not about to use me to be. No, I am not working with her. I put my foot down and I dare you bring her back on this platform while I'm here. OK, I don't care what's in the contract about we can't sue each other, whatever I'm suing. And Bravo is going to be my B word. Bravo is going to be my B war when I'm done. Try me. And Candy won that battle. Now, Candy took a break. So if Bravo choose to bring her back, hey, do your thing. But so far, she have a contract on marriage and medicine. And we shall see what she's going to do on marriage and medicine. So season seven is when you got sentenced and you were on the way of going to jail. During that season is when you discovered that your wife, speaking of texting, was texting another man that was labeled Mr. Chocolate. How did you find that out? You Did you go through her phone too? See, yes, I went through her phone. I went through her phone. Um, she used to safeguard her phone like it was like, I don't know, man, kind of like they do down at the Federal Reserve, you know, at the post office. So while we're getting ready to go, I see the phone with the light on. That means the phone's open. She goes to the other room. <clears throat> I take the phone, I go upstairs. I go in Dylan's room, I hide off in there, and I'm going through the phone. And I see all these messages with her and the guy flirting, her sending him these pictures and talking about, you know, I mean, it's all, they showed it all. It's all online. How she's had a couple drinks and she's feeling a certain way and all just inappropriate shit. And how she can't wait for me to leave. So I guess that they can do whatever they're doing. I mean, hell, that's, she texted, not me. You know? And I don't know if you remember, I did that interview uh, not too far from here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so... Uh, and then at that point, I came downstairs and I was like, I was pissed off. At the same time, there's an agenda. So I told her mom, I said a couple things to her mom. Her mom was in disbelief said some things to her. We got in the car and handled our business. I didn't yell at her in the car, none of that stuff. I just said, you know what? We're just gonna handle our shit. We'll deal with this like later. That's how you look at me, that's what you feel. Okay, cool. I don't expect, I really didn't have any expectations. Me going to prison, you're gonna hold it down. I'm, you're gonna, I, you know, I really didn't. Apollo also said in that interview that when he got back from prison, Phaedra was engaged to somebody else, but he felt like they had unfinished business and he was able to get her back. Then the whole Dr. G conversation, she's over there stuttering. Then before Apollo even goes to prison, she's texting another guy, sending pictures and doing all of these things as a married woman, but yet sat on that couch on her high horse and on this show coming for Kenya Moore. And that's the reason why I kept using the word projecting as it relates to all of them, because all they were doing were projecting their insecurities and everything that they were doing on Kenya Moore. Phaedra picked up her purse and almost hit Kenya Moore head 
because Kenya brought up Mr. Chocolate and exposed her again. Candy exposed her, Apollo exposed her, and those messages are online. But she was so upset that she was being exposed because when people attempted to give her grace and say, okay, you and Apollo are not in a good place right now, okay? He's probably texting somebody else. And at this point, he was just friends, but he was texting his current wife, okay? He's going to prison. There's a lot going on. People are trying to give her grace and say, you know what? So if you're texting somebody else, even though you're still married and trying to work on your marriage, we get it. Oh no, I would never do that. I would never stoop that low. Almost fought Kenya more about it. I'm waiting until my divorce is finalized before I do anything. But yet she was a married woman messing with other men while her husband is still over here trying to figure out his whole situation, okay? So my point, and then allegedly, you know, that heavenly be talking that, you know, Phaedra be out here. I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. So like I said, everything she sat there said about Kenya Moore is exactly what she was doing. And to take the spotlight off of her, let me go ahead and accuse this woman of doing certain things and drag the storyline out, even though I'm the one over here texting other men. Now, the whole story about Phaedra being engaged he said that when he did his first bid, okay, so when he came home the first time, because he went twice, when he came home the first time, she was engaged, he was able to get her back, and then they ended up on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Because of course, when he came out the second time, he was already in a relationship without his current wife, who held it down for him, and then he repaid her by being disrespectful and cheating, allegedly. And back to his ex-wife, Phaedra, real quick. That whole fake pretending like she's perfect and that's the reason why once again she couldn't remember her due date because she lied. She was embarrassed that she got pregnant before they got married. And girl, who cares? The both of you are adults. Do you? But because she is so judgmental of other people, she always wants to put forth this perfect life. And he said it. I'm going to post a part two. And he said it. He said Stop lying because when you lie, it leads people to go down that road. But I'm going to end this here because we're over 30 minutes in the part where he called her out for lying and all of those things. I'm going to play it in part two. Anyways, I'm wishing all of you well and take care. Thank you all for your love and support. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up. Also, turn on notifications so when I do post, you're ready and post it. And I will see you all in the comment section. Remember to always have the God bless attitude, which is being positive at all times and seeing the good in every situation. Have a great day, guys. God bless.